I couldn't see the forest through the trees. It takes being plucked. No, it takes being ripped out of a situation or environment to see the danger and manipulation. And today I want to share something personal with you. For months, I kept my head down and focused on growing personally, professionally, because God only knows I needed to. With so many life-changing events, moving parts, decisions made for me, by me, both good and bad, I worked to keep the train on the tracks. I was agreeable, at times anti-confrontational, and internalized much of it because not looking to weigh others down with the force of every detail. And to a fault, I became distracted, easily influenced, and unfortunately, in many accounts, manipulated. Kindness is often confused for weakness. In all reality, it is to a degree, because kindness sees only good, trusts implicitly, and shares freely. As I keep my circle rather small, I rely on my friends, heavily leaning on them, actually, and trusting them. I had a friendship with an employee with whom I trusted their efforts, intentions, and willingness to support and help. I believed in them. Little did I know the narratives being shared behind my back. Over the course of time, unsure of specifics, but confident nonetheless, this individual managed to isolate and insulate me from my friends and others, filling my mind with half-truths, untruths, and the same about me to others. Every single facet of my life, both personal and professional, due to a personal relationship and business relationship, infiltrated. Passwords, information, feelings, thoughts, personal struggles, manipulated long before my knowledge. Over time, unbeknownst to me, personal and private information was used to harm my reputation and degrade my image. Also, they could prop me back up and save me. Decades-old friendships ruined. False and or controlled stories all jumbled, their timelines skewed to the point I could not keep heads or tails, all painted me to be a liar and unreliable. Before the culmination and ruin of relationships, I asked for help. What I needed help with, I was not sure. I was exhausted from the ongoing tasks of chasing my tail in business, keeping it together in my trauma struggles and the pending divorce proceedings to know how to articulate. I was broken. Over the course of a few months, an individual under the guise of burner numbers and false or nearly false narratives began demolishing what credibility I had worked 13 years to build. Not once, but twice. The second was the cruelest. Painted as unreliable, unwell, unhinged, chaotic, burner numbers were created and used to text me messages to unalive myself, telling me I am dark, that I am the worst human in the world, and fake identities created to push a story of being a womanizer, liar, thief. Keep in mind, on the other side of this, the individual doing the damage is working to help me figure things out and work through these struggles. Fake women, a Natalie, a Lisa, stories of spouses leaving spouses for our relationships, pictures of lingerie placed in a bag in my closet sent to people. Any information which was personally known, was somehow fabricated, twisted, and used to weaponize against me to others I care for, adding them all to this intricate web. I was isolated, severely depressed, and had all the thoughts that go along with being severely depressed. And with everyone removed from my life, I had no one to assist. 
By this time, it was only this person and myself. This person was the one who had destroyed my support network and at the same time came to me disguised as a friend. I trusted them. I made a huge and grave mistake. They assisted with my social media. They had passwords to every account. As I continued to get well, I was met with constant noise of what I should be doing, how I needed to do those things, and how I needed this particular individual to carry everything in my life out. I was agreeable until I was not any longer. During a trip to Houston, that's where I went to visit my family, I told my uncle, I'm scared of her. His eyes widened. He said, that's a big deal. And quickly, I realized I needed to remove myself from this relationship. It was during this time I recall having shared this with a friend months earlier, but it was met with a chuckle and brushed aside. I did not know this person was already sharing their version of a narrative with my network. Using their words as my words in many instances, they worked behind the scenes to make others turn against me, all to control the narrative. They emailed family, my therapist, texted friends, texted my mother, demanding I release my dog, saying I didn't feed her, a sex addict who pays for sex, having proof in receipts. I don't know of many prostitutes worried about accounting discipline. In May, a public filing was made by my ex-wife deeming me as someone who abuses a medication I am legally prescribed and the request for a psychiatric evaluation. Only after four drug tests, all of which were clean, and a formal letter from a licensed provider did this go away. My merchandise library, deleted. Facebook music page, deleted. They had put an image of me in my underwear on my official website, along with an updated bio filled with words previously and dangerously similar to texts they sent both from their name and from burner numbers, saying, I am an awful human. These were posted. All of this and more traced. My email accounts, social accounts, and other personal accounts were compromised. I was told over and over about how I am a liar and terrible person, how I cannot keep my lies together. To be honest, I was so confused and my head left spinning, I just could not. The threats I experienced off and on before, but by this time overwhelming, all-consuming. I was so angry and overwhelmed, embarrassed and defeated. It was not until I called a friend in the legal field, I told them the stories that I had realized the severity and danger associated with it. It took nearly three weeks of coaxing for me to take a stand. After months of them encouraging me to unalive myself, reminders of how terrible I am, lies about me, telling me I'm a horrible father, mockings online and to other people, Nights of utter loneliness. I decided to stand up for myself. September 29th, I applied for and was given a temporary protective order from this person. Following this, the temporary order was immediately broken with hundreds of videos mocking me and bragging on having quote-unquote facts and quote-unquote, truths which will bury me. Two weeks later, even after breaching the EPO and confident posts being posted, they showed up without a lawyer and requested two more weeks to prepare, which were provided. Again, multiple show causes were filed on my behalf using my name and hashtags, mocking and defaming me. Talks of guns, text messages telling me to sh they're going to shoot my ass, all put out into the world. 
At the hearing, I brought over 500 printouts of evidence, texts, emails made to brands to sabotage partnerships, some successful in ruining, emails to fans smearing me, proof after proof of efforts to ruin me. On the stand, the only argument against me was the previously filed petition for a drug evaluation, my mental health challenges and a totally unrelated matter in hopes I was painted poorly. When they were on the stand, they lied under oath on two occasions and admitted to doing so. One was breaking into my home to take a piece of art off the wall, a gift, and throw it in my fire pit out back. It was caught on camera, and the excuse of being told to do so by the one gifting, for they were mad at me, was all that they had. As this is a public record, I was granted the maximum three years of an EPO. An EPO which has still been broken by indirect communication. Because of the threats to harm and proof of, pending criminal charges remain. So what is an EPO? It's a legal order issued by the court to protect individuals from threats, stalking, or harassment. In my case, it was deemed necessary due to dangerous interactions and all three. I had been beat down over many months. It saddens me that so many people were ready to believe the lies without seeing any actual proof of what I was being accused of. The prayer of Mother Teresa has rung in my head since July. And it closes because in the end, it was between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Perspective over perception. Remember that. Now you know.